The T-34 is the backbone of a Soviet armored core. Equipped with a 76 millimeter main cannon and 1.8 inches of sloping frontal armor, the T-34 is a perfect balance of firepower and protection. The M48A3 Patton tank boasts a high-velocity 90 mm main gun, 110 mm of frontal armor, and a top speed of 45 km per hour. The M2 Bradley is a reconnaissance vehicle designed for mobility rather than heavy combat. It is equipped with a 25 mm main cannon capable of firing high explosive rounds. But to increase its speed and range, it is protected by just 25 millimeters of armor plating. The Bradley is no match for the powerful T-72. The Jack Panzer IV is protected by 80 millimeters of sloped frontal armor and is powered by a 300 horsepower engine, enabling it to reach top speeds of 40 kilometers per hour. It is a 26-ton tank killer, equipped with a 75-millimeter high-velocity cannon, able to rip through even the most robust Allied armor. Originally designed as a stopgap while other tanks were developed, the Panzer II is modestly equipped with a light 20-millimeter gun and only 1.4 inches of frontal armor and is no match for the more robust Soviet tanks. The KV-1 heavy tank is a 43-ton monster. Its 76-millimeter main cannon is lethal even at long range. And with 75 millimeters of frontal armor, it's the most heavily armored tank on the battlefield. Armed with a high-velocity 76-millimeter cannon, the Hellcat is designed to quickly engage and destroy enemy armor. It has a top speed of close to 100 kilometers per hour but that speed comes at a cost. The Hellcat's armor is only 13 millimeters thick, making it highly vulnerable to enemy fire. North Korea's main battle tank is the Soviet T-34-85, outfitted with 45 millimeters of sloped frontal armor and armed with an 85 millimeter main cannon. The T-34-85 is considered by many to be the greatest tank of the Second World War. The Tiger tank is the Germans' ultimate armored weapon. Encased in over four inches of armor, it is practically impervious to frontal attack. But it is the Tiger's 88 millimeter cannon with a range of more than 2,000 yards that makes it the most deadly weapon on the vast and sprawling battlefields of the Russian steppes. The Firefly, upgunned with a powerful 17 pounder cannon, is able to penetrate 130 millimeters of steel. Enough for even the thickest armor on a Tiger. The T-54 is a Soviet-designed main battle tank. Intended for tank-on-tank -tank warfare, it's armed with a 100 millimeter main gun and has nearly 10 centimeters of frontal armor. Built on the chassis of a Panzer III, the Stug is a turretless assault gun which means the driver has to swing the whole vehicle around to aim its high-velocity 75-millimeter cannon. The DD, or swimming tank, has a sealed lower hull to keep it from sinking, and it gains extra buoyancy from high canvas skirts. But its most unique feature is its duplex drive, twin propellers that push it along at a speed of almost four knots. The Panzer IV is the most widely used tank in the German arsenal. It is armed with a high-velocity 75-millimeter gun and boasts 80 millimeters of frontal armor, more than the Sherman. But its sides are vulnerable to the American tank, having only 30 millimeters of armor. On January 29, 1916, the British unveil history's first tank, the Mark I. Outfitted with two enormous 20-meter-long tracks, the Mark I is designed to span even the widest of trenches and can be armed with either two six-pounder naval guns or four deadly Vickers machine guns. The breech-loading 47mm anti-tank gun. With a barrel length of two and a half meters, 
and a muzzle velocity of 830 meters per second, it presents the first serious challenge to U.S. armor in the Pacific. The FCM-36 is well protected by 1.6 inches of frontal armor, but its short barrel 37 millimeter main gun is designed primarily for infantry support and is all but useless against Guderian's tanks. Advancing towards the French are dozens of Germany's formidable Panzer Mark III's. They are armed with a longer barrel 37 millimeter cannon, giving the Mark III much more killing power than the French tanks. The Soviet T-55, weighing in at less than 45 tons, is light, fast, and carries a lethal 100 millimeter cannon, and its wide tracks make it ideal for the soft sand of the Sinai. The Soviet 76.2 millimeter divisional gun is a tank killer. It can smash through a Tiger's side armor at a distance of nearly 1,000 meters and wreck its tracks. The 58-ton British Centurion in service since 1945 has been upgraded by the Israelis with a 105 millimeter cannon, giving it more firepower and a greater striking range than the Egyptian's T-55. The Panther Turm is a Panther turret mounted on a concrete base. Its low profile and heavy armor make it almost impossible to destroy. And its high velocity 75 millimeter gun makes it extremely dangerous. The handheld Panzerfaust is one of the deadliest anti-tank weapons on the battlefield. It fires a shaped charge at ranges of up to 100 feet and can penetrate almost 8 inches of armor unleashing a devastating explosion inside. The King Tiger is the largest tank the Germans have built. Also called the Royal Tiger, it weighs 70 tons and has 150 millimeters of frontal armor. And is armed with a high velocity 88 millimeter main gun that is more than six meters long. The M3 half-track, equipped with a rear-mounted 75mm cannon, is designed as a tank destroyer. Lightly protected, with just 16 millimeters of rolled face-hardened steel, its only means of defense is to attack. The 77mm Krupp field gun. Normally used for indirect fire on trenches, the 77 has been modified for direct fire against tanks and its six kilogram armor-piercing shells are accurate at distances of up to a kilometer. The M72 light anti-tank weapon, or LAW, fires a 66 millimeter high-explosive anti-tank round that should penetrate the armor of a PT-76. The Allies' newest tank is fast, with a top speed of nearly 40 kilometers per hour, and it's powerful with a 75 millimeter short-barreled cannon. At El Alamein, it proved itself a winner, and in Tunisia, the American tankers are riding high on expectation. The three-inch M5 anti-tank gun has a muzzle velocity of almost 800 meters per second, enabling it to penetrate 92 millimeters of armor at ranges of over 900 meters. But even that is not enough to penetrate the 100 millimeter frontal armor of Piper's Tiger tanks. One of the Israelis' main battle tanks is a modified version of the American M48 Patton, known as the Magok. It is well protected with five inches of frontal armor and has a 105 millimeter cannon that can accurately hit targets at ranges over two miles. The T-62 is an upgraded version of the T-55. Those upgrades include 240 millimeters of frontal armor and a bigger 581 horsepower engine. But the biggest threat is the T-62's 115 millimeter Malat main cannon. Its smooth bore design increases muzzle velocity giving it a range of nearly 3,000 meters. The Panther is armed with a high-velocity 75mm main gun, and its sloping front hull gives it the equivalent of five and a half inches of armor protection, making it almost impervious to head-on attacks. The AT-3 Sager is a Soviet-designed portable anti-tank guided missile. 
Fitted with a 5.7 pound warhead, the Sagger can penetrate eight inches of armor at ranges of nearly two miles. But its most deadly feature is a wire guidance system, which allows the operator to steer the missile all the way to the target. The Hago light tank, armed with a 37 millimeter main gun. In a straight fight, it should prove no match for the medium Sherman M4. For the Israelis, the tank of choice on the rocky terrain of the Golan is the Shot Cow, an upgraded version of the Centurion main battle tank. It's protected by 152 millimeters of frontal armor and equipped with a 105 millimeter rifled cannon, accurate at ranges in excess of 3,600 meters. The Shot Cow is a formidable opponent to the Syrian's T-55s. The T-26E3 Pershing tank is America's answer to Germany's fearsome Tiger. This heavy tank boasts an impressive 100 millimeters of frontal armor and a lethal 90 millimeter main gun with a killing range of 1,500 meters. The A7V is powered by two 100 horsepower gasoline engines protected by 15 millimeters of side armor and armed with a 57 millimeter main gun and six heavy machine guns. The Super Pershing is an upgraded version of the Pershing tank. It has 140 millimeters of frontal armor and a new long barreled 90 millimeter main gun that can penetrate more than 200 millimeters of steel. The PT-76 is a Soviet-designed light tank with a crew of three. It's armed with a 76.2 millimeter main gun, but it has only 17 millimeters of frontal armor. The Satan Flame Tank is a reconditioned Stuart M3 light tank. Its 37 millimeter main cannon refitted with a Canadian-designed Ronson flamethrower. Nicknamed the Colossus, the Charby one Bis is protected by more than two inches of frontal armor, making it virtually impregnable. Combined with its incredible firepower, the Charby one Bis is the most powerful tank on the battlefield. The RPG-2 is the NVA's primary anti-tank weapon. It is a rocket-propelled grenade launcher that fires a 1.8 kilogram shaped charge that can bore through 200 millimeters of armor. The Matilda II is equipped with a two-pounder cannon, capable of destroying German armor at a range of 1,600 yards. But its most impressive feature is its three inches of frontal armor, making the Matilda II the best protected tank on the battlefield. The Crusader is the mainstay of British tank forces. It's capable of a top speed of 15 miles per hour, making it the fastest tank in the desert. But the speed comes at a cost. The Crusader has just one and a quarter inches of armor plating, leaving it vulnerable to anti-tank fire. And its light two-pounder gun is all but useless against the Panzers. The Jag Tiger is a self-propelled tank killer, a 71-ton armored beast with a 128 millimeter cannon that can tear open a Sherman more than three and a half kilometers away. Named for Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, the JS-2 is the Red Army's answer to Germany's Tiger and Panther tanks. It's protected by 4.7 inches of frontal armor and its 122 millimeter main cannon is powerful enough to destroy a Tiger. The M24 is designed more for speed than for armored battle. Its hull is equipped with only 25 millimeters of armor, and its main cannon is a low velocity 75 millimeter gun, not designed to take on heavier tanks like the T-34. The Sturmgeschütz is a mobile tank destroyer, with its low silhouette and high velocity 75 millimeter main gun, the Stug is the deadliest anti-tank weapon in the German armory. And by 1944, they have destroyed 20,000 Red Army tanks. The Grants are a major improvement over the fast but vulnerable Crusaders. 
They have two inches of frontal armor, providing greater protection for their six-man crews. But its most unique feature is its powerful side-mounted cannon, a weapon that provides the Allies with an effective countermeasure against flanking attacks by German panzers. Panzer Mark III Special. It's designed for tank-to-tank -tank combat with two inches of frontal armor. But it is the Mark III's armament that gives it the edge. With a 50mm main cannon, able to fire armor-piercing rounds at ranges up to 710 yards. The 88s fire armor-piercing shells, able to penetrate almost 100 millimeters of steel at distances up to 1,500 meters. And the Canadians are well within range. And leading the charge of their counterattack is the latest in Allied armor, the M4A3 Easy 8 Sherman tank. The Easy 8 is armed with a high velocity 76 millimeter main gun and has 63 millimeters of frontal armor. But the Sherman's biggest advantage over its German counterparts is its ease of manufacturing. Enabling the Allies to put hundreds into action all along the Ardennes battlefront. The Soviet T-72, known in Iraq as the Lion of Babylon, is the backbone of the Iraqi Armored Corps. Its 125mm main gun can destroy targets over 1,800 meters away. It's a 41-ton monster, plated with armor that is in places 300 millimeters thick. Still, it can reach a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. This makes the T-72 one of the fastest and most lethal heavy tanks in the world. The Abrams is armed with a 120 millimeter high-velocity cannon and protected by composite armor that's as tough as 60 centimeters of pure steel. It's one and a half times heavier than the T-72, but just as fast. 